Welcome to Four Leaf Review. Today we're going to be reviewing the CLE. Uh, it's a Connecticut. It's 50 by 5 and uh, made by CLE. So, brief little synopsis here. CLE is, stands for Christian L. Eroa out of Honduras. They make some fantastic cigars. This cigar here, Honduran, uh, primarily a Honduran cigar. Uh, I've got Honduran filler, Peruvian filler, a little Nicaraguan filler. Uh, we also have the uh, Honduran binder all on, all inside of this beautiful, beautiful Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. You know, one thing I like about all of these CLEs is they do these little paper covers instead of cellophane. Oh, it covers it. Uniform too, through their whole covers it. It's a little twist on the end. I think that's cool. Yeah, instead of instead of the cellophane, which you know doesn't help inside of a walking humidor, but you know looks pretty. Yeah, it looks nice. It's uniform. It looks good across the company. So, all right, I'm gonna use the the wonderful V cut. Light these guys up and see what we get from here. I don't know what are we what are we getting off the uh, the dry here. What, what do you got? I think with the fresh box, there's a lot of cedar present. Mm -hmm. Just a lot. Yeah, it was very almost whizzy. a little a touch of sweetness. You know, I'm doing this uh, pear cider, and I don't know if it's that talking or not, but I get a little apple on a dry draw. Yeah. Cold draw on this. I get a little. I get a little green apple. I really do. God, that's such a nice V cut. Wonderful Colibri. These are nice. What are you thinking over there, Dan? I think on going into a standpoint, even at a dry. It's got some wonderful notes to it. It does. Like I, I do hit a little bit of a hint on that. Mm -hmm. Some apple in it. It's weird. Yeah, it actually does. Like a dry. Hanging out there. It's like a like a green apple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hanging out there. It's not definitely not predominant, but some. I would so. say some woodsy because it's in the you know the cedar box and everything. But yeah, it's definitely heavy cedar, mm -hmm. but that's fresh mm -hmm. box. So that's that's a very nice smelling. Cigar. Mm, that first tip. It's nice and soft. Soft. Mild. Starts out real mild. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Easy going. I agree. Typical Connecticut, but yep. It's uh definitely nice on the on the palate. Oh. Oh, oh thought we charged it. Oh Seth it broke is. it. Shake it up. Shake it up. <laughs> Technical difficulties down here on the leaf review. First time. It would time. happen the first Your time. Your first time with technical difficulties? Uh, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Still a great lighter. Somebody, somebody Someone said didn't fill it up it. there. I did. I, I, they, they must have used it all up. <laughs> Could be hot. I swear to God, if you empty that one too. Someone's going to someone's gonna have to leave and go get, a, go get us a lighter. Do the next review naked. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, the, the punishment. Review. Yeah. <laughs> and next week, Seth will be here with a shirt off. Some people might like that. Eh, not necessarily my style. What are we getting that here? That is a great draw. It is nice. And, uh, always anything with the CLE line always I tell has you, that, great draw. That is that is the one thing about all consistent the CLEs. Their whole line. They they roll them consistent. They draw consistent. They burn consistent. And you know that's a big seller for me. I I can think maybe maybe one or two times that I've smoked anything out of that line that it's been off. I haven't had a one. I, I've I had, really have not. I've had a couple maybe just you know, get a little hot. And you smoke a lot of them. Every, pretty much every single Couple. day. <laughs> this is my favorite line. It is a very good um, line. Well, every uh, single one has uh, a phenomenal. Let's take a minute and specify that. So in this company, there's CLE, there's Aroa, and there's Asylum. So the CLE line. So kind this of is the mid-tier. 
Well, no, the Sealy is kind of their base. They're, they're all three different. The Aroa is like the first 20, things like that. And the Asylum, obviously, completely kind of separate. But, right. Uh, you know, the Asylum thing is kind of a, a Tom Lazuka thing. And nice gentleman. I've met him a few times. Mm -hmm. And then the other two, Christian Aroa, uh, obviously, he's involved with all three of them. But mm -hmm. you know, the Connecticut, this is kind of their, I mean, it's... It's a starter this, smoke. This is as mild, this is mild as you're going to get in this company. This, this is as mild a cigar as you were going to find with them. I will tell you, though, that the, um, the flavors on this um, run true all the way through, I think, the CLE line. Yeah. You know, I think the CLE line has that very similar toasted nut flavor yeah. through the Corojo, the Chile. <clears throat> I mean, obviously not your, your triple Maduro and things no. of those natures. Uh, but I, I tell you what, the Connecticut... In the Hab Habano, the you know they all have that very similar flavor through them. Yeah, and well, obviously we're not gonna you know do all CLE here to start. Well, we will get to the Corojo and the Habano and the CBT and, and all that stuff at some point here. Yeah, this but, is uh, this is something that is very good for your first time. It, it's uh, approachable. Cigar. It's, it's very, very approachable. approachable. Very mm -hmm. approachable. And for years, I wouldn't touch Honduran. Yeah. So yeah. there was something to them, but they have, for a predominantly Honduran line, yeah. they've made this a very smooth. That's it's opened up. It's opened up that part of the world. I mean, I, I was the same to me, way. Anyway. I mean, there. I'm not going to name the other brands, but there are some other, you know, Honduran cigars yeah. out, you know, over the years that you know, were, I, you know, I guess the best way to put it is less than favorable on the taste and the quality, but. You know, this is still. I mean, this is a relatively new brand. I, I don't know exactly how long it's been out now but it's it's a relatively new company obviously the Aroa family's been growing tobacco for a long long time but this brand with Christian doing this is relatively new yeah and it's when I first started having cigars um, which has been about three four years now obviously start out with an asylum <clears throat> great very nice light draw for a beginner um, and then I was always drawn to the Nicaraguan tobacco and every time I go out of it and I was like it doesn't taste good but when you go to this if this this is just it, it puts the the butter right on top it's like it's so good it's smooth it's well, you have a little bit of, a you have a little smooth. bit of all best of both worlds here you have some Nicaraguan tobacco on the filler and Honduran you're also dealing with a little Ecuadorian on the outside too so yeah. you're kind of dealing with all yeah, the best that. world now, I'm not the forefront expert on Peruvian tobacco. I know there's a little bit of a filler, but what that adds or takes away, I, I, I can't tell you for certain, but you know, yeah. we're getting a little best of both worlds here because we're not dealing with a super mild Connecticut. It's not like smoking nothing, which some are. Yeah. It's, it's got some flavor. It's got some body. It's more than it's, cardboard. It's not... <laughs> more than you know, cardboard, yeah. It's not, you know, it's definitely approachable for the beginner. You know, if someone walk, you know, if someone walked up and, you know, it's nice, it for the first time, it's approachable. It's a very, it's got yeah. some body though. It's a very yeah. nice blank cigar, whatever you want to pair with it. I mean, this is, it's a nice smoke for sure. So, being that this is our first podcast, we'll kind of introduce my, ourselves. I'm Dan. Adam. Alex. Seth. Uh, like I said a little bit ago, it's about three, four years since I started smoking cigars for me um, and these guys. Uh, I've been, was big into the cigar game in the, in the 90s boom, uh, working in uh, golf courses. And uh, of course with golf, you had to have cigars. So that was probably um, early, mid 90s, started really getting into the cigars. Myself, I have... Oh, roughly seven, almost eight years in the, in the cigars now. Uh, I currently am a retailer and cigar establishment owner. We will leave that, obviously, undisclosed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been in the, the tobacco industry pretty much since 18. Started working in a, a local store and, you know, a small operation. Then, you know, we kind of moved along to what we're doing now and, you know, been a few years. Smoked a lot of cigars with this guy too, and it's mm -hmm. his turn next, so mm -hmm. I'll pass it to him. <laughs> yeah, no, I got started on cigars regularly anyway, getting into them about nine years ago. Lived in Florida. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I smoked 
one or two a year since I was 18. And uh, yeah, just got a little, <clears throat> picked up a humidor and a 10 pack and thought that looked way too empty. <laughs> that so, was down, right downhill that, that from was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a mission to Let fill the her spending up. begin. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And it's, it's crazy because we all met basically from this. Oh, absolutely. Um, the cigar whole industry, just enjoying it. It's a culture. We grew and then we became friends and then we sat down and decided to do uh, the podcast. So it's it's a lot of fun. I'd like to see where this goes. It's This is a journey. Cigars it's, are definitely a common bond. You know, you go to a cigar bar, it's different than, you know, <clears throat> doing anything else. You know, you could have a lawyer, a plumber, a you know, an accountant, it doesn't matter, you know, everybody, it's it's a common playing field when you come to a cigar bar. Everyone I go to is, it's is like that. It, it's, the, it's nice, it's kind of like that, it's almost like that, that brewery vibe. It's communal. Sit, sit where there's a seat open. Mm -hmm. You know, just because there's two guys sitting on a couch grouping, there's no reason you can't sit there. Mm -hmm. that, whether you have a conversation or not, it's a little beside the point, but, you know, a lot of times you strike up a conversation, I mean, you could be talking <clears> with a guy that's, you know, picking dandelions on the side of the road, you could be talking with a multi-billionaire. I mean, you just never mm -hmm. know. They bring people together, for sure. Oh, huge. It's a common bond. It's almost yeah. a yeah. brotherhood, sisterhood, whatever you want to... I mean, it really is, and there is, you know, that that out there, this aspect of this with the, you know, the bottle and sobble, you know, brother of the, brothers of the leaf. Brothers? Plural? Yeah. Brothers? Yeah. I mean, sister of the leaf, sister, sure. so, I don't know. people of the leaf. It's leader. plural or something. No one said I was. No one said I was illiterate or illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> they proved it. Yeah. Remember class? Yeah. What the heck? Uh, can we roll that back a little bit? Come yeah. Down? yeah well. So, what do you guys think of this so Sorry far? Sorry about that. Hasn't changed too much. I'm still getting. Uh, I yeah, think it's just a nice a, consistent. It's consistent. Every, good or bad. Like it's consistent all the way through. Everyone mm -hmm. just looks like everybody's got a pretty good burn. The draw is uh, yeah. great. The draw is still fantastic. Pretty it's, damn even so it's far. It's burning really. You can tell the draw is great when the smoke <clears throat> yeah. comes out like that. You know, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. Well, I think it's also, I mean, a lot of V cutters, they're very narrowed on some of them. On this one, this really opens it right up. It takes to a V cut, these, <clears throat> mm -hmm. this whole line does. Yeah. For it sure. just it really opens them up nicely, and you get that really it good. It does, especially with the Kalibri. Being typical, nice I would imagine it's I a triple cap. I can't see. Yeah, yeah it's a triple cap. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and that holds up a little better. You know, these. You know, we're using Calibri. There's a lot of other cutters out there with V cutters. Yeah. They're all getting. You know, and we we've talked about this. I think actually we all talked about this. You know, with even with this cutter, I mean, it's it is fantastic. It does a great job. But if it's not a triple cap, sometimes if you don't pay attention. Or it's not sharp. You or... cut a little too far, and it the yeah. the cap yeah. falls right off. You know these these deep V cutters are good, but sometimes it's a little too much. Yeah, and it's kind of like there's a lot of different cuts. Um, I mean, the punch on some of those would work up because you won't really mess up the cap. Yeah. Oh, but on a fifty, I like a bead. <laughs> yeah. I really yeah. Do. Mm -hmm. On some of them, the punch is nice. A straight cut works in some in some realms too. I think that's a per personal preference for sure. It is. You know, I think it all is. Honest. I personally don't care for the straight cut, that guillotine cut, unless you're doing a small. Just because, you know, I think that opens up way too much of the cap. I don't think you get the flavor from it. I also think you get a lot of tobacco in your mouth. Yeah, you get a lot of that loose stuff, little pieces from the end. I like the mouthfeel of a V cut, too. I really do. A good sharp V cut mm -hmm. is nice. That's it. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, I, I, I think we all V cut. We should have, someone should have straight cut, but. Eh. No going back now. Well, different sizes. We can. Yeah. No. Yep. No. Yeah. Why we're not? not? We're not sure. Really, I thought we were gonna rotate the ashtray. Like, ash was this mine? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who's this? This? I don't know. I have mouth Spin surgery. Spin the bottle, now. cigar. <laughs> <laughs> now close your eyes. Uh, yeah. This is. This has been really nice. This is a smooth, smooth smoke. I don't get a ton of any particular flavor from mm -hmm. any of it. You know, I, I do get that toastiness that I get from a lot of the CLE line. Um, you know, it does have that nice Connecticut butteriness that you spoke of. Yeah. Um, you know, I do get uh, woody notes. <coughs> you know, I do get um, what I call, well, it, it's Cedar. a ton of cedar. Um, I get a little bit of a hardwood oak flavor. I really do. I get mm. that kind of like dry white oak kind of sharpness to it. Actually, going back here, I, I, I was thinking about it since this is our first show. 
I don't remember what mine was specifically, but do any of you guys remember what your very first cigar oh, absolutely. ever was? I remember ever. the time I lit it up. I remember it was uh, an oh. Ashton Classic Churchill. Oh, nice. Good yeah. call. So I did a good call. There was a regular at the bar I worked at back when we could smoke at the bar. And uh, he came in regularly, smoked cigars. And I was looking to take that jump from the Swishers, and he recommended that all day long. So I went down call. to the local shop, picked one up on the way to a little local music fest, and walking around the woods, lit that thing up, and it was an eye opener. Yeah, it the, was diff- the difference. <laughs> any, oh yeah, I mean night and day. But I also think it's great for people to start. I would say most people's first cigar is like you know a gas station. It's, like it's a, a black and mild trip when you're 16 years old and you're in the well, I mean, where you're in the that, woods of the ski yeah. hill, you know. Yeah. Something that's meant to be torn apart <laughs> and then put back together. Right. <laughs> but, different uh, ingredients, but yeah. we, that, but that, that's, a that's, diff- that's a different show. But. but I think that's a good place to start, because then when you do smoke a real premium handmade cigar, it is night and day different. Well, it's one of those things, yeah. if, like, you know, that, that guy who got you, I mean, he picked a good cigar for you. You know, if you picked a, a powerhouse and you spent the whole night in the bathroom, you know, which... It's a real thing. Uh, yeah, I think it'd be a happens. different different circumstance. I mean, I don't remember my first cigar. I remember starting smoking acid. I know. You can criticize me now. Mm-hmm. I know he's near there or something. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. And it begins. Mm-hmm. Um, mine was the Asylum. I think, what was it? The, I can't remember. It was more of a, like a sweet tip one that... In gen- talk, uh, yeah. uh, insidious. Insidious, that's what it was. And it was just with a group of friends. We were at a bachelor party, and he's like, all right, everyone's smoking a cigar. I'm like, cool, let's go. <laughs> and uh, that went. That continued on through the night. I didn't get sick from that. It was a nice light cigar, so that helped out. So that was, that was a lot of fun, and then I got into more. I just continued with it, and... Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Smoked a lot of different cigars, and it's only going to continue. Well, I remember my first cigar. You know, of course, there was a lot of... Back uh, in the day. Back 1912. In the day. Yeah. Oh, now we're going age joke. Yeah. Nice, nice, guys. Um, you know, there were the, the black and milds and, and, and all of those, but I remember being about, oh, 10 years old and finding an old box of white owls. And uh, these had to have been 20 years old. It was dry. It was horrible. Um, it was little, you know. And uh, took off that old crinkly cellophane and lit it up. And the thing burned in probably about less than five minutes because it was so dry <laughs> and old. It was horrible. I think there was a bunch of spare change and gum in there, and that's kind of what it. It was like that. It was like it was like that. It was like that. That, that pop. It was like watch a pop fire. He smokes a cigar. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Pennies and clothes. I, I, I mean, actually, yeah, it was horrible. Spare keys. You know what I mean? It was you know the junk box. Tasted like pennies. Yeah. Had Some all whatever box. whatever that box tasted like. That's what that cigar tasted like. It had lost all flavor. Well, you know we, you know being uh, the. I guess we could specify we're the Michiganders that we are. Everybody in the Midwest has the drunk drawer, and your white owls just happen to be in that yeah, drawer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who the, knows when they were from. Maybe my parents getting married or something, or grandparents or something. Who knows? Who knows what they were from? Your dad found them when he was done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a brought over on the Mayflower. <laughs> yeah, right. Again, with well, the jokes. Yeah. Mm. No, I, see, I, I remember... I remember smoking acid, but I also remember, I mean, being, you know, 15, 16, going on ski, you know, my buddy, you know, lifting some, you know, fucking black and mild and shit off the shelf of a gas station on the way to ski. Nice. <laughs> Criminal record. Nice. Uh, whatever. I didn't do it. He did it. Yeah. Accomplice. Yeah. Uh, I guess I was driving. Oh, well. I didn't peel out of there. Anymore. I'll go back and give the gas station the, the $10 I probably owe them. And, right. Well, with interest. But in, yeah. the, in the garbage over, <clears throat> over the years. But uh, no, going back in the woods on the ski hill and smoking the Cheyennes and the, the Black Cheyennes. Oh, yeah. I've never got into any of that. Well, fuck you. When you're, 16, when, you're 16, oh. when you're 16, you take what you can get. 
It's like when you ask uh, your older friend to go buy you a beer. You're like, hey, go buy me this. They don't buy you that at all. Yeah. Then it's like, what are you going to do, bitch about it? Joe Bell. <laughs> <laughs> I got you some Cobra. Yeah, yeah exactly. Here you go, you kid. Some... Who are you going to tell? <laughs> Call the cops. Here, I got 240s and some duct tape. You're going to have a good night. <laughs> some piss warming. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. <clears throat> I don't know. We're progressing along here. What are we? We're all, oh. we're all about halfway. Oh, you lost your hash. Oh, that was a good third, though. Yeah, roughly. I'm getting there. When I retro it, I feel I get a little bit of a leather note, um, some roasted like leather note. It's nothing too heavy. Uh, a little bit of I spice. I see it linger in there a little bit. It's yeah, on the, it's on the back of the, the tongue, not on the forefront. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's kind of back there. Yep, exactly. A lot of creaminess to it, you know. Mm -hmm. And I get that with that leather too, you know. I get a little mineraliness with it too. I get, I get like a metallic <clears throat> mineral, you know. Hmm. Yeah, I don't see that one. Yeah, we don't see that one. Yeah. Um. So well, we don't call them the palette for nothing. We'll kind of. So CLE, when you look at the reviews and stuff, and CLE gives an overview of it, they kind of give you a point of um, <clears throat> some of the notes that are and hints of it that you're gonna get is roasted nuts some cream mm -hmm. leather with a pinch of spice mm -hmm. so think, out of all of those what do you what are we really uh, you getting know on? I've, I've had these before i, I see the the latter I, the spice uh, we don't see it now but that final third <clears throat> is usually where it starts to they kind of get a little pepperiness that final mm -hmm. third it, it just it picks up in intensity and that's that's across you know the whole line really i don't want to say every cigar but especially in this line the cle line i've noticed mm -hmm. even the corojo the Amano, the last third picks up. It's not extreme. It's not Starts like, oh my build. God, my head's going to explode. But yeah, it builds. Yeah. You get a little peppery. It's <clears> a little more, just a little oomph at the end. I get it. When you start drawing, it's where that creaminess is. When you really start to release it, I can taste more of the leather side of it. Spice, like we say, it's it's not too strong. It's not it's present not right now. Mm -mm. It's not. A, I think it builds to that. <clears throat> yeah. I'm getting some spice for sure, like a bacon. Yeah. Spice. I don't think anything is super predominant in this. I think it's very well balanced. I think that it's, uh, you know, there's there's nothing that really pops out anything one way or the other on it. I think it's it's a very well balanced cigar. I think that's honestly what they were going for you know, with something like this is just something, you know, it's not overly complex. It's not like, oh my God, I have 13 flavors here that make making my head spin. It's, yeah. I think what they're going for is, you know, and, and obviously they've been growing tobacco for a long, long time, and yeah. Christian's been blending a long, long time, and they're going for let's make something kind of easy and consistent and keep it consistent. And It's like a nice old warm sweater, you know what I mean? I, I guess. I don't know what an old warm sweater is. Tastes like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never thought I would smoke. Ah, huh, tastes like Woolworths. <laughs> you have to go to the, the, the local Goodwill and see if yeah, I can find a little sweater. Yeah, there you go. It. There you go, yeah. <laughs> the sweater that Grandpa died in in his Next house. Next week. <laughs> huh, well, Dan's like, not here. Yeah, He's sick. Yeah. Got the bubonic plague. <laughs> God damn it, that's holding on. You got the same thing going on. Mm -hmm. I even set this down. Yeah, mine just fell. Yeah, well, you, you, you weren't gentle with your ash. You know, it's... Uh, he likes it rough. It's another aspect of that. This, you know, being a consistent roll and burn on these is that that's, that's held together real nice. I mean, I've had this conversation all the time. I mean, uh, when you get a big ash like this, it's consistency and it's quality of the tobacco. You're not going to... You know, you're not going to get a long ash on something that's not... Would you say it's more so from the long filler? Maybe because short fillers. I mean, I don't know if it's really. I can't. Uh, to me personally, I, I can't. Pin roll, it to a I can't pinpoint it to a specific yeah. part of the cigar. I think it's, it's the culmination of everything all together. Because I smoked the, the, a lot of long fillers that just fell apart. I yeah, mean, you, you get you get, ash you get a you know a fucking so quarter was, inch and falls right off. That was kind of my thought the other day. I was like, I wonder if it's more so on long fillers that they stay steady oh, or I've, the short fillers. I've never but. had a short filler one. Well, the problem with short filler is it's all that little pieces of tobacco. It's never going to mm. stay. It's flake. Yeah, mm. so it's, it's, the ash is always flake. I mean, like, this isn't That was like that. That, that smoke is, just hit. It was, like, really yeah. creamy. And, and I see where they say the nuttiness because once that smoke hits you on the back It's a toasted nut for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I, I can't, I can't <clears throat> really retrohale. 
all that well. <clears throat> so I this get one's the, a very get the, bright one. You get that aroma, that just the smoke coming off it. You know, you're not like putting your nose up, sticking the cigar up your nose and taking a huff of it, but just getting the, the notes of that because it's different. <clears throat> it can be very different. And this is a very light cigar to where you could, if you wanted the retro, you could start to introduce yourself Sorry, I, to it. I gotta say, I swear to God, if I ash one of my drinks, I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm quitting. I'm leaving. <laughs> no. Going home. No, this is, yeah, I'm going drop. home. This will be great. Drop, drop, baby. Drop That'll the whole be, cigar. <laughs> That'll be the subtitle for the whole thing. <laughs> Man ashes his drink. <laughs> What's well, fine, not if cigars <laughs> won't. <laughs> Ash ashes his drink, puts his ash in the drink. Oh, oh. Well, last man standing. Yeah, problem well, solved. Let's see you if you guys uh, buy the bar tab. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if uh, Adam here can ash in his drink. No. And then it happens. <laughs> I would laugh so hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, we all gotta. Whoa, whoa! The pressure's on. <laughs> Tell you what, it pairs real nice with that. Um... I, I, until I did that uh, cold draw, I didn't get that apple. And I'm telling you, with this pear cider, it really, it, it, it's the one thing that complements it really well. It really does. Well, it's one of those things with cigars. We've got a little sweetness on this. It's one of those, you could pair th drink pairings sweet with sweet, or you could try and do complete Contrast. opposite, contrasted, or you could try and s do the similar thing. And there's, there's multiple different ways you can go with Sure. I mean, alcohol pairing that's a whole different and that's a that's a nice thing about it is you can really change up the flavoring and profiling of the cigar with just a drink well you can bring out nuances <clears throat> of flavors in each mm -hmm. you know um we do that quite a bit you know yeah. we'll have a cigar and we'll be like what is this like and surprisingly some <clears throat> not very obvious choices that come up you it's, know mm -hmm. it's it's fun trying to to pair things together and go, well, you know, let's try that. Ah, oh, no, that doesn't do it. What about this one? No, 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 no. And then you go, oh, yeah, that's the one. And some you just, that's the one. Some you just can't. I actually thought that this one was, this was purely by chance on that one, honestly. Some you can't pair. I mean, they just, they're, they're good on their own. Or, you know, there's just nothing that, that goes with it. I like on these ones, I like to have some coffee. Because that creaminess just, it blends so well with a nice cup of coffee. I love coffee. Yeah, that's what I'm drinking. Almost. I, I chose, I was going to try and hide it. I'm wearing my skirt on the table. And I tried to hide it in rocks. So I'm drinking Prosecco. Oh, I know. How does that go? It, it's actually really good. I, I like the, it's like I've talked about before. So you drink your acids? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> No, but I, I mean, uh, like with the cider, so I think it's the same thing you do with as a Prosecco. I like those small bubbles. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. Prosecco is very, to me, it's very neutral. There's little not a little effervescence. Yeah, just a little. Kind of lightens it just up. Just kind of, it's a palate cleanser a little bit. So I, mm -hmm. you, know, you take a little sip in between, you get a little, you get a fresh taste on it. Actually, I didn't even think about this. I, I don't even know if I did it. And then, did you purge? Mm -hmm. Between. Uh, yeah, I purge. I have not yet. I, I, yeah, I, well, you haven't matched yet. I have not yet. Um, what do you guys think for next week? What should we. Review for that. Do another Connecticut or maybe. No, I think we should maybe uh, step into the medium realm a little bit. Are you thinking maybe an acid revert back to your? <laughs> Take you back to your. <laughs> I'm gonna bring <laughs> acid tabs in for everybody. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a really fun show it's gonna for be all of them. Jeez. <laughs> uh, guess what's going on your drinks next week? <laughs> what are you drinking? <laughs> Colors. Spanish <laughs> drink. <laughs> No, no, no. I, I mean, I don't think we want to. I don't think we want to, you know, beat the Connecticut train to death. I think we need to step into something, uh, something in the medium realm. I think we'll uh, leave a little, little ambiguous and not nail it down quite yet. But yeah, something, I... something, uh, you know, the medium realm that is also approachable for that, you know, occasional cigar smoker. Yes. You know, because not everybody smokes, you know, <clears throat> no, 37 no. cigars a day, like, oh! I said it down hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He said his ass down hard. I wanted to be able to take the uh -huh. ring off. Uh-huh. <clears throat> I mean, what do we, what, I mean, what, what's the verdict here halfway through? What do we... I don't know, do we want to jump to... Uh, I think that it's a nice, easy, approachable cigar. Mm -hmm. I really do. That's, I haven't found any huge differences in traveling through. You know, even I'm a little past halfway now, but even getting to halfway, I haven't noticed any 
major changes. The body is still the same. Yeah, it's very Draw consistent. Draw is still good. <clears throat> I was chiefing it there for a minute, so it got kind of hot, but, you know. Well, I tell you with that, uh, when you purge it, I do definitely get that um, fresh wood. I really do. Well, the purge, uh, it's nice because it can freshen things up. You get all that sure. old smoke out of there, and I, I try and do it every time, but I obviously forgot this time. When I get low, I do. You know, yeah, it's hot. Yeah, I just purge it. You get that. You get more of the nuttiness out of it. You yeah. Know, that what they're saying. And nice reamps that creaminess that comes with it. <clears throat> So next week we'll do something more medium. What are you thinking, line wise? Are you thinking? I don't know. There's, there's. I mean, just in all, all the realms, you know. I mean, the well, I guess really I can't say three, maybe four with the infused realm, and then all what is in there, and then your mild, medium, full, you know, and then all your in betweens. What about like a nice uh, sun grown of some sort? Yeah, I mean something that, as I said, it's something you got that, the something approachable. I mean, yeah, Fuente is always good. We can travel, the travel to the DR next. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It'll be something we gotta think about, and you know, think I think also, I mean, anyone that does watch this, obviously, it's still new. If you have a cigar that maybe in the lighter realm, medium realm, that you really enjoy, leave us a comment and. Uh, We'll definitely take that into consideration and, and put that into it. If not the next one, we'll do it in the following or the future ones. Um, <clears throat> that's, that's something that we, we yeah, want to do. Obviously, we're a little limited on selection. We'll do our best. But, you know, we definitely want to hear what, 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 people, what, what everybody has to say. You know, if you got a cigar that you're just, just itching to see reviewed and see yeah. people agree with you, then we can... Yeah, if somebody else is smoking we, we one can of do these our best. and see what they think yeah, of it as absolutely. well. We'd love I, to hear I, what I, other people I, I, that I smoke love. this or, or, or what they think of it's the CLE those, line or, or any those, Connecticut. It's one of those commonality things about you know being allowed. That's why, like me personally, I always leave man because it's a conversation. Yeah, you know, I, mm -hmm. obviously the four of us we talk about the cigar, but I, I love to hear it. If someone else out there goes, "This is just terrible, the worst cigar ever," I want to hear it. I want to hear why. Why? Like, yeah, why I, is that so bad? It's to you? so hard to see though. Because this has been... That's a great cigar. It is. It's a phenomenal cigar. But maybe I, I, someone <clears throat> out there could not get the, mm -hmm. any of the notes we're talking about at all. And to each their own. What do you think of the ring on this? I like the colors that they do on them. It's kind of a modern spin on it. It's got the little it's, hologram. It's out, they really stand out. When you get the whole line together, you know, with CLE. With the this paper, thing, too. It's, it, it just... It's not it's over sharp. the top. No, it it's isn't. Clean. It's classic. It's sharp. It, yeah. it's, it's a little <clears throat> bit of both. It's, yep. It is that classic. It is a little bit of the modern, but but it doesn't go one way or the other. The only thing I would it's like to busy. see... It's not busy. Pardon me. The only thing I would like to see... Uh, I'm not... I don't know. It's tough to say, but just for taking some of the upper end of the company and, and aging them, you know, without any cello, it's it's not impossible, but it, I'd like to see some with some cello on it to be able to put it in the aging humidor at home and you know, take, see what it take three, four years, see what happens, see what yeah. happens to a CBT Maduro. <clears throat> you know, yeah, in, that would in be four really years, nice. you know, with, that, great with that dark food. tobacco all fermenting and just mm -hmm. sitting there, but it, it's hard when they're opened. And for, which leads to the big debate. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll the save chicken that. or we'll the save, egg. We'll save that for another time. That, that's and a, I that's think also hour. for the price range, these cigars are very priced very well. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. generally you're looking anywhere from that, on the really small guys, that 5 to $6. And, you know, and some of the upper end of the Aroa products, you know, not, obviously I'm speaking of the Aroa products, not, you know, all the stuff C that Christian makes, CLE. You know, CLE, you're looking, I don't know, I think it maxes out somewhere in the <clears throat> mid-teens, maybe, for some of the, the big guys hmm. in the 60s, and I don't even think that gets that far, but... What was that ring gauge you've seen on their website? Uh, I, I want to I wanna try the, the <laughs> 69 by 4 I, 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 I kind of want to try it. I want to I I know what it's called. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a couple guesses. It's like a baseball bat in the mouth. <laughs> Coke can. Yeah. <laughs> and next week, we review the Woody. <laughs> so long as us, us for long as this table. Yeah. Join us for the twelve hour marathon and watch us cry. Yeah, that'll the be the special. Yeah. Yeah. Be crying they make it stop. Yeah. Someone make it stop. Yeah, end of the month special. <laughs> Going for lunch breaks. Oh uh, my goodness. Intermission. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Time lapse it. Yeah. Wow, Still be a three-hour 
Fuck. Oh, God. God, that would be, yeah. Well, I definitely think from uh, all the flavor profiles and uh, price point and, you know, even aesthetically how it looks, it's a, you know, entry level into the uh, fine cigar <clears> world. <throat> mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. obviously I, I'm generalizing the pricing I'm saying based on what we have here in Michigan on our tobacco excise tax is being only, and being capped at premium cigars at 50 cents, you know, and some of the other states it could be a little bit more based on their... Yeah, based on their tax structure, but I don't think it's going to be horrendous. You know, some of those eighty percent or sixty percent of states that you're looking, you know, for some like some like we're smoking. That's I don't know seven, eight, nine bucks, something in that realm. Under ten. Under ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah, under, under ten is a very good. You know, some of those other states that <clears throat> may have people following us in, it could be a little bit more, but it's worth it. It mm -hmm. is. You know, if you can pick up something off the shelf, I, I would say pick this up over. You know, if you see it on the shelf, you never had it, pick it up over that. You know. Other Connecticut you smoke. There's a lot of other great Connecticut's out there. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong, but mm -hmm. if you haven't tried it, it's worth it's worth a try. It's a For very sure. very approachable smoke. It's very enjoyable. It's everything about it's very nice. Um, you're not going to spend a, a shitload of time on it. It's something to sit down and have a conversation. We are really enjoy that whole. Uh, bit of it and then and everything else that comes with it. Well, I don't think we specified either. We picked the, <clears throat> the 5x50, 50, 50 ring gauge, 5 inches. It's it's a good, uh, I guess at the most, an hour cigar. At the most. That's really if you're nursing it, but, you know. Yeah, with a couple of relights. Yeah. Mm -hmm. an hour, yeah. Uh, a little, maybe 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. Maybe even less if you're a little faster at smoking cigars, but. It's a great size. <clears throat> I like Robusto. I, I like the 550 and all, all the lines. I mean, we smoke, we have the 1118 and smoke that a lot. And the, the, the shape of that cigar is great. But Sexy. Some, sometimes, uh, you know, the, the 5 by 50 it's, I feel like that's almost a uh, standard on what they use when they're blending cigars, too, is that Robusto. Yeah, side. I think Not it's also. Don't me on that, but I, I, I think they tend to roll Robustos because it's just a good size. I think it's a very well balanced in the, in the amount of blending that goes into it because, you have everything that's just, it doesn't overpower each other. You get that full flavor effect of what it has to offer. No, it's not like smoking a <clears throat> 60 where it's mostly filler. Oh, man. Yeah, there's some that... Or a 70 where it's really mostly filler. And everybody's looking looking at you like, uh, that's a stogie. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody get any cocoa out of that at all? Just down towards the end of this building? I was trying to pick up, as I said, a little bit on the spice. Just yeah. a little peppery. Mm. And I, I, think yeah, it just has peppery, a, yeah. I think it just has a little to do with that buildup of, you know, you, you're smoking a cigar. There's there's tars and things that are that are building up uh, towards the, the head of that cigar as you're drawing, you know, through there. But it's still consistent. It, it picks is. up a little on strength. It just picks up just a but... tad towards the end. Yeah, just yeah. near the end. And it could be just it's because not, of the heat. That it's not vomit. overpowering either. Mm -mm, it's it's not, like you still, it's still creamy and still easy going. It yeah. just, it picked up just a titch of spice. Yeah. And it could be just because of, you're getting closer, the heat's getting closer to you and you can really get that, yeah, and that initial. It could play a factor, getting hot, hot mouth feel. It's good smoke. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know how much more we can... No, I think that's it. Now we dive into the bab. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is good. I think we got a good start. And uh, like we said, next week we're going to pick throughout the week. If anyone has any ideas on cigars that you may want us to review, hopefully we get some feedback on this. And uh, let, us, uh, let us know some constructive criticism even, too. We, we want this uh, more to be about... The introduction, basically, to like the like the culture around cigars, um, giving that introduction to it from our point of view and perspective as friends, and um, also in a standpoint to where if you are a beginner smoker, you kind of get an understanding of what you're looking for, to where you're not going into a cigar bar and going, I don't know, I'm new to this, and it gives you an entry point to go, you know what, I I, I heard this podcast or I watched a video on YouTube. And these guys reviewed the cigar, and it sounds like a delightful cigar, and I want to try that. And you can walk in with a little <coughs> confidence, too. Yeah, It can exactly. be intimidating walking into a humidor for the yeah. first time. When you don't know anything. And Especially when you have, options. yeah, it's, it can be overwhelming. And in this standpoint. Different um, sizes, lengths, ring gauges, yeah. brands, lines, facings, you know. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah. I, I it could be daunting. Good. It's like when you turn mm. 21 and start walking on the liquor aisle. <laughs> Come on, well, you know, I, know. I was ready for 21. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bottle so, of Ripple. All right. So, for now, till next week, you guys have a good week. Yeah.